Hi SD fans and welcome back to the channel. With digital cameras and waterproof housings getting ever more affordable, it seems like virtually everyone is turning into an underwater photographer. Now we can't guarantee you'll be producing award-winning images after watching this video, but these 10 basic top tips will certainly help you up your game and set you on the road for getting some cracking photographs. For those here for the first time, my name's Mark, I'm the Editor-in-Chief of the Scuba Diver Media Brand, and welcome to the Scuba Diver YouTube channel. Take two seconds, hit that subscribe button, and you won't miss out on any of our future videos. Remember to ring that bell so you get notification of the latest releases. Everyone loves free, right? Check out the description below for all sorts of goodies, like a free digital subscription to any of our magazines. Where we can, we'll link you to the destinations or equipment we talk about in the support our channel section in the description. For transparency, we'll earn a small commission each time you purchase after clicking on one of our links, and this will go directly back into making more content for you to enjoy. Now, let's dive into the video. Tip number one, nail your buoyancy. One of the biggest problems with cameras and housings becoming ever cheaper is that even beginners are entering the water with them. Before you even consider trying your hand at underwater photography, please, please, please get your buoyancy down pat first. There's nothing worse than people plowing their way through a pristine coral reef, chasing a fish for a photograph without a thought for their buoyancy. You want to have your buoyancy control a second nature before adding a camera and housing into the mix. If getting neutral in the water is instinctive, then you'll be able to retain decent buoyancy control while you're attempting to take your photographs. And remember, no photograph is worth trashing the reef for. If you can't get in to take a shot without damaging a reef, move on in search of another subject. Tip number two, get used to your camera. Now this might sound common sense, but you'd be amazed how many times I've been asked extremely basic questions about someone's camera system and on talking to them, found out they have only just bought it. As with any piece of diving equipment, it's best to get your head around it at least the basic functions before heading off underwater. I'd suggest starting with the camera itself first. Familiarise yourself with all the main controls, take some test shots around your home and local area, and then put it in the housing. And do it all over again. Yes, the controls are all in the same place, but it's amazing how different it can feel operating a camera through a housing. If you have access to a pool, it's a good idea to go for a dive with your camera and housing in there prior to your first diving holiday. As before, you might have used the camera and housing topside, but it's a whole different scenario using one actually underwater. It's much better to get to grips with your camera and housing in these situations rather than grappling with the complexities on your first dives of your diving vacation. Not only will you not get any decent shots, but you could also end up kicking the living daylights out of the coral and or your buddy. Or worse, end up in an accident because you're so caught up in trying to wrestle with your camera and housing that you take your eye off the ball when it comes to your basic diving requirements. Tip number three, don't cut corners when getting ready to dive. Although as I said in the introduction, digital cameras and housings are coming down in price all the time. If you are using a decent mirrorless camera system or a DSLR, then the camera itself is still going to be a pretty penny. The lenses are still quite pricey and the housings will be a wedge of cash. So you will want them to last. The quickest way to a dead camera is by skimping on your preparation, which sooner or later will end up in a flood. But I still see people playing Russian roulette by just not taking the proper precautions before each and every dive. Take great care with each and every o-ring. Make sure there are no nicks or cuts in them and apply a very small amount of silicon grease before you fit them into your housing. These days, with more and more strobes being triggered by fiber optic cables, which don't have to be hardwired into the camera housing, there are fewer and fewer o-rings to contend with. So really, there's no excuse to cut corners. After you've got all the o-rings in place, before you close the housing, have a good look at them for any errant hairs or pieces of debris. 
even the smallest piece is enough to break the seal and that will cause a flood. Once your housing is sealed, dunk it into water to ensure it is sealed and that there are no bubbles coming out of it. And if your housing has a vacuum pump, make sure you use it. On the flip side, I remember being on a trip with an underwater photographer who was seriously OCD about O-rings. He would literally pour over each one for a good 10 to 15 minutes before fitting them into his housing. Now I'm all for being careful, but watch out that you don't go too overboard and become obsessed. Tip number four, get a strobe or two. Most cameras have a built-in flash, but these are next to useless underwater. One, the flash is too small to really light anything underwater anyway, and two, the flash that it does emit will only light up all the particles in the water and ruin your shot with backscatter. Built-in flashes are usually located too close to the lens. What you want is an external strobe or two. Again, like cameras and housing, strobes have come down a long way in price. There are numerous benefits to using external strobes. Be mounted on arms that keep them a decent distance away from your lens. With careful positioning, you can minimise that dastardly backscatter. Strobes also pump out significantly more powerful flashes, so you'll be able to better light your subject matter. And as they're on articulated arms, you can move them wherever you need them for specific shots. Tip number five, take a test shot. I have seen far too many underwater photographers excitedly grab their camera housing off the camera bench on the boat and then giant stride off ready to capture some amazing images, only to realize once they're on the dive itself that they've left their lens cap on. Once my camera and housing have all been fully prepped, I do a test shot, including any strobes that I've got on the system to make sure that everything is working. It's far better to discover the lens cap is still in place, the camera battery is nearly flat, or you haven't got any batteries in your strobes at all when you're sat in your room and can rectify the issue, rather than once you are underwater when all you can do is curse. Tip number six, get close. So you've got your camera all prepared, and you're now on the dive, ready to start shooting. One of the most sage pieces of advice I received when I started out taking underwater photographs was to get close to my subject. In fact, I was told to get close and then get closer, as inevitably when you're starting out, what you consider is close is still too far away. You don't want to have your subject fish being a tiny speck in the middle of your image, do you? But I can zoom in, I hear you say. Well, yes, you can use zoom on certain cameras or with certain lenses, but it's best to keep this to a bare minimum. I've seen people with compact digital cameras zoom in and fill the frame with their subject, but they're a good four or five meters away, in which case their strobes are not gonna be able to properly light the shot. Try to move in slowly and carefully and fill the frame when it's set as wide as possible. I tend to shoot with a 16 mil lens when shooting wide angle, and so I am the zoom. And it is amazing how close you really have to be to get a good shot. So just remember the mantra, get close and then get closer. Tip number seven, shoot upwards. The other piece of advice that has always stuck with me is to always shoot upward, or at the very least level with your subject. Sometimes it is impossible to do anything but shoot downwards, but it is extremely rare that such shots will come out well. By shooting upwards, you will get better lighting and you can often frame the subject against a blue water background, which will make it pop far more than if it is against a cluttered reef scene, for example. Tip number eight, take it slow. Don't chase after your subject, as I guarantee, unless it's a nudibranch or something like a frogfish, it can swim faster than you. I'm constantly amazed at people who insist on shooting off at speed after a turtle. Believe me, you're not gonna catch it, and at best, you'll get a shot of its rear end disappearing into the blue. Approach your subject slowly and carefully, not being afraid to stop for a while if it appears nervous or skittish. If you take your time, it is possible to get extremely close to some creatures, such as turtles, stingrays, and so on. I always try and approach animals from head on. If they can see you coming, they're less likely to swim away. Whereas if you come at them from behind, their survival instincts will kick in and they'll be off. This may mean when you spot a potential subject, you have to do a wide arc to swim around and then get in front of them. Tip number nine, maintenance is key. While preparing your camera and housing to go diving is vital, 
it is just as important to perform after dive maintenance as well. Try to dunk your camera in a rinse tank as soon after diving as possible, but this will only get rid of some of the salt water your system has been swimming around in. When you're back to your room, leave your housing to soak in lukewarm water for an hour or so, and when you first put it in, give all the buttons a press five or six times each to really help that fresh water get into all the nooks and crannies and rinse out any residual salt crystals. If there has been a reasonable length of time between you leaving the boat or dive site and getting back to your room, maybe a stop off for an apera dive beer or two, then I'll leave my house in to soak for a couple more hours to really get rid of any dried salt crystals. Once it's had a good soak, I give it a quick towel off and then I set it on a towel on the floor to fully air dry. Tip number 10, don't be afraid to use technology. Some underwater photographers can capture absolutely amazing images that look fabulous when taken straight off the camera. But by and large, most images need a little tweaking once you've downloaded them. And there are a multitude of computer programs out there that you can use to give your photographs a bit of a lift. Just as with your camera and housing, you need to get to grips with this software. So practice is key. And don't feel like you're cheating. I've seen the originals of many an outstanding magazine shot, and they don't look anything alike. So everyone does it. And if the technology is out there, why not make use of it? What are some of your top hints and advice for budding underwater photographers? Leave your comments below. And if you've got a question, fire away. Because if we can't answer it, I'm sure some of our ever-growing subscribers will be able to exist. Remember, if you enjoyed this video, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of our future content and go check out our playlist for more educational and hopefully entertaining videos. As always, if you're going diving, stay safe.